Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this dimensional box card. And um, it's a long video, so I apologize, but there are a lot of steps. So starting out, I want to cut out all of the um, little flowers and things that I want to put. And so I'm going to be using some of this um, and it looks like I lost some of my video here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, my iPhone is crazy today. I don't know what's going on. I had a live tonight and it quit on me twice. It's just nuts. But anyways, I have this little tin and I am cutting out all of these little flowers. And these are from the Funky Flowers set from last spring uh, from Tim Holtz and Sizzix. And I'll uh, link down below what the... Uh, different stamp sets are and then the uh, it's a uh, wild flowers and mini bouquet uh, die set so um, I started cutting most of these out on my uh, Gemini machine thinking I could get a lot done but it kept buckling the paper and this is um, Tim Holtz multimedia paper um, in hindsight, and right now I'm just cutting out this little corner die, which was, is going to serve as kind of like a, I don't know, a, a really ornate gate or something. Um, and I end up cutting that twice. Um, in hindsight, I think that um, my very first one I did, I did with the Accent Opaque 120 pound. And I felt like the flowers and such were sturdier. Uh, so, I mean, it's up to you. You can use whatever you like, but because I started this video with this um, multimedia paper from Tim Holtz Distress, I figured I'd just carry it right on through. So, what I'm doing here is I'm just cutting apart some scraps so that I can lay them down on here and get all these pieces covered. And as you can see, I've already cut some. They're over there in my tin. And again, apologies for this video. I don't know what the heck is going on with my iPhone. I thought I pressed record, but apparently I didn't. Or it just decided it didn't want to. I don't know. I don't know. So I couldn't find enough scrap, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut a piece that goes all the way across. I also did find that um, with this paper in my Gemini and all of these dies, the paper kept buckling. And with my 110 pound or my 120 pound accent op opaque, it does not buckle. So that's just a note. Um, I do like the Gemini for you know cutting things that you know, multiple, multiples of things versus my Vagabond. Plus that, you know, on my Vagabond, I have to press the button on the Gemini. I just push it in and it just kind of takes itself through. But with this particular one, it started making some crazy noises and made me a little bit nervous. So <laughs> I'll probably stop using the Gemini uh, for this particular set. But it cuts beautifully. So, I'm, you know, I'm not going to complain about that. Not one bit. Um, that that ill itty bitty bitty piece is actually a bud for one of the flowers. So I'm being careful and watching it. So I'll just pull this paper off. And then I'll bring my tin over. And I'll, I'm keeping each set separate in its own little little mini muffin tin. It's the only one I I know I have another one, but my husband felt like they were useless, so misplaced the normal sized one. <laughs> uh, this one works just fine for these small dies. So I'm just picking out all the parts and making sure they're in their own separate place and I learned that from the last one I did because I got them all mixed up as far as the stems go for those um, long sets of leaves which are beautiful by the way I absolutely love this set um, it's got some neat feathers and eggs too but I don't use them in this video and then you see the cone flower there that one I'm going to have to hand color because 
I thought I had the stamp set, but I only have the big stamp set. So I'm going to have to wing it on that. But it's a good thing I love cone flowers because, yeah, <laughs> I don't mind coloring it. And so I'm just doing my thing. I hope everybody's day is going well. This is my Saturday, even though it's Tuesday. And um, that's generally when I like to do videos. And I hadn't planned on doing a video on this. But I'll tell you, my friend Carla, um, she's uh, she makes cards for cancer. Something like 2000 or 2500 a year she donates to cancer wards. Anyway, she was pointing out to me this box die set on a particular website that I'm not going to name, but the set itself was like $89. I'm like, what? And now the box die is about, I want to say, 39 for the box card, which, I, you know, I mean... If you need a die, you need a die. I, I'm I'm not going to begrudge you that. It's kind of a pain trying to get things straight and stuff like that. But <sighs> I just would rather spend my money on ink and paper and other kinds of things. Um, it's just not something that I'm going to use often enough to really justify its value. So I'll go ahead and speed up the video here because we don't need to spend all this time um, watching me cut things out because it's pretty redundant. But what you see me doing here off camera because I was zoomed in is trimming up the, um, the little piece there with the ornate die. And I'm just gonna kinda clean that out a little bit, get all any excess. And of course, the, the Gemini has a whole lot of pressure, and it does end up ripping this in a couple of spots, but it's okay. I'm just going to use it anyway, because honestly, I actually end up cutting another one because I wasn't happy with that. But I'm going to go ahead and trim another piece down so that it'll fit on those. And I start to put it in my Gemini, and then I realize, and then it mo I see it shift. So I'm going to go ahead and move these dies around a little bit. And this is what I love about the magnetic. I wish there was a magnetic situation for my Vagabond. And I could probably make one. <laughs> but anyway, I'll run that through my Gemini and get those pieces cut out. Um, because again, I need at least four of each, maybe more. But that's my start point. But it cuts it really well if you use smaller pieces of paper. I, I don't recommend a full sheet of paper, at least not this paper. Um, the Accent Opaque at 120 pounds seemed to work when I tested it when I first got this. Um, this is from CraftSmart. These, uh, all of the plates, the magnetic and the shim and everything comes from CraftSmart. And, you know, I wanted to really put it to the test. Um... And so I put a lot of, you know, I put a full page full of dies on there when I was first testing it. But this particular paper wants to buckle, so that's that. And I'm just pulling out the pieces again and putting them in their respective tins so I don't lose any bits or pieces. And I keep them together, particularly the long branches with their own, like, uh, vein, center vein. And that vein is sometimes kind of hard to get out. But I get it. And let's just get this last one. So I'm using this uh, Distress Multimedia Paper for the entire project. Um, it's good paper. It's great for doing mixed media. But um, ultimately, I... Yeah, I prefer the accent opaque or, or a heavier cardstock. So this was only maybe 110 pounds. And it just, to me, didn't have the bulk I needed uh, for my flowers to stand up to the torture I put them through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out my... Um, get out my cutting plates for my Vagabond 2 instead. 
um, and I'm going to cut the remainder of them with the Vagabond. It's just, you know, there's not a bunch of them. I don't really need a full-size cutting machine, and I don't want it buckling like it was. So you can see how it cuts much differently. It's interesting to compare how they cut. And, uh, I, you know, I'm on the fence whether I'll get the switch or not because I really do like the idea of just putting the thing in and letting it go versus pushing the button on my bag of bond. But it's my trusty Dusty, and it's what I've been using for, I don't know, maybe a year? Now, I've only been doing this for about, well, my first YouTube video was on April Fool's. <laughs> and I probably started September of that year, so that was last year. As far as card making and die cutting and things like that, you know, I've been a crafter forever and, you know, doing 3D, you know, like making boxes and notebook covers and that kind of stuff. But straight up cards, not that long and die cutting, not that long. I do like it and I have quite the collection now, just like any other healthy crafter. <laughs> so I'll get those pulled out and that'll be my last, my, the last of these um, particular dies. Kind of just get my mess cleaned up and then we're going to go ahead and get ready for coloring. Now you see I've got my little tin and it's got all its little pieces and parts separate. And I do like to usually put away all of my stuff. No, that's a lie. I'm trying to get into the habit of putting away my stuff. Generally, well, uh, some of you have seen pictures of my desk after a crafting project, and generally it is a jumbled up, huge, gigantic mess, and you wonder how anybody can get any work done. But I kind of resolved, if I'm going to make a resolution, I kind of resolved that I'd sort of, kind of, ish, clean up as I go. So that's what you see me doing here, and um, we'll see if I stick to that throughout the year. <laughs> we shall see. Because I, you know, I just get anxious to get on to the next part. So the next part, of course, is going to be coloring these guys. And again, my video didn't work out right, but um, what I did, what I'm doing here is I'm distressing the edges with some walnut stain. And um, I had already distressed the little white edges. I just left those white or off-white, the natural color of the paper. And then I colored in the centers with some fossilized amber. And I'm just distressing the edges of each one of these. And I'll glue them together and we'll go on to the next. So this one, I show you how I do all of these. I showed it in the other one too, but for whatever reason, it didn't record. So <laughs> lovely. Um, so I'm going to be using some picked raspberry for the little flower petals. And, uh, sometimes I use my wax, my little wax picker tool to move things around when they're that tiny. And I just tamp on, I do not, I don't rub or anything. I just kind of pounce and I'm using these little finger blenders to pounce on the ink. And I have the ink pretty heavy on them. I don't clean them or anything, but, you know, and I tend to use them in the same color families. I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm looking here for my fossilized amber or my, um, yeah, there we go. I'm going to use the wild honey for the middle parts of the flowers. And you can leave them plain or you can color them or you can cut them out with colored paper. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the um, rustic wilderness here for the stems and I do like to color both sides so that when you're looking down into the box card and maybe seeing from the other side you're not going to see any white or off-white in this case so they don't have to be colored perfectly on top because you're going to cover them with the flower petals but I do you know color the entire thing because I don't want any white showing and on the backs, I just dab. They don't have to be perfect at all. It's the back, but I just don't want to present with an odd color. 
versus what you see when you're looking at it from face value. So I will take and uh, use my little blender tool here and I like to use the foam, the little flat foam one for these because it's very soft versus the dome foam ones that are kind of firm to just get ink on the edges. And yes, you will get inky fingers. That is my MO. Everybody who watches my videos knows most of the time I look like I never bathe, but I do. I just never stop crafting. So we'll get these colored in and then I'll start to glue them together. But you see, I am distressing every single one of these. Okay, so what I already went ahead and distressed these and let me just try and pull this up so it's more in frame. And I'm going to go ahead and start gluing them on. And I'll glue the first one together. And then I'll glue the rest off camera. So you just, I take my little tweezers and I put a little bit of glue on. And if there's excess, I dab it off there on my little silicone mat. And, um, you know, because I don't want a lot, a lot, a lot oozing out. Because, I don't know, I just, it looks boogery. I don't know. This little tiny piece there is just a little bud. And boy, those get lost easy. You can see one of them's not the right shape. Well, that's okay. It, it, it'll still work because I lost the one that I needed. So there's how the flower is. Okay, so this one, I want to show you how I color it. So I'm going to start with the fossilized amber and use one of these little finger blender tools. And I get these from scrapbook.com or Amazon or wherever I can find them. I'm just gonna roughly color it with the fossilized amber and then I'm gonna go in with some picked raspberry to make the purple top. And I'm just kind of dabbing that in. And because I don't have the stamp, I'm gonna have to hand draw these. So what I do is I make a lot of little kind of lines around the bottom and then I make the lines around the top. And basically the main premise is that you wanna make the lines go in a circular motion so that it gives the appearance of depth. So I'm just using a Sharpie here because the ink is wet and nothing else works like a Sharpie with wet ink. And then I'm just gonna kind of rough draw the lines in, you know, where the edges of the flowers are up to the center. So not rocket science, pretty easy. Nothing as beautiful as the stamps are, but again, I don't have the stamps. And then I'm just going to put some random lines here and there just to kind of give it a feel of movement. And that's that. Super simple, super easy. And I'll take the stem piece and I'm going to color that with the peeled paint, which is one of my favorites, by the way. Um, it looks a little different on this color paper than it does on white paper, but I love it on every color paper. And then I'm just going to turn my flower over and you guessed it, I'm gonna go ahead and color the back too. Um, you know, no details on the back. I'm not going for all that, but just to kind of get those colors going. And I'm also gonna color the back of my stem here with the same peeled paint. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on the, um, oh, actually, yeah, I forgot, I'm gonna, Go ahead and distress the edges. And you don't have to distress. And guess what? You can use, you know, anything you want in this. I'm using flowers. It's because it's what I have. You have butterflies, use butterflies. You have little animals, use animals. You have stars, use stars. The sky is the limit of what you can put in these things, depending on the theme you're working with. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue here. And I'm using my reptile adhesive. And I'm just gonna push this flower down in the position I think I want it to be. Let that glue dry, and I'm gonna color everything else off camera. So I'll see you when I come back. So now I have this little, I have those all colored. And again, that part of the video got lost. And this is such a long process. And I just don't wanna do it over. And <laughs> I'm sorry. But this is, I mean, basically, the the point of this video is how to do the box card. This is all just uh, fluff here, <laughs> I guess. And I'm taking my walnut stain 
And first I start out with my little foam blender to try and get this in here, but you can't really scrape across that with it because you'll rip more than it's already ripped. It's pretty delicate. This again, use heavier paper. This paper isn't gonna cut it for this particular application. It's too flimsy. You know, especially with a super, super intricate cut like this. So I'm gonna get some in, try and get it in a little bit darker, not dark enough, so I'm gonna grab a brush. And again, this is ink and not oxide, and yeah, putting the ink down on with the brush is very helpful. Doesn't have to be perfect, it's the back row. It's gonna be basically buried in flowers. It's kind of a, I don't know, when I, <laughs> When I think of this particular card, I think of like an English garden or an overgrown garden or a, or the garden from um, Anne Rice's novel, the witches, how she describes the witches series, how she describes the beautiful place in New Orleans. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to score this at half an inch because I have already cut it down to three and three quarters inches. And I want to put the score mark on, on first because I'm going to be doing some embossing on this. And I want to make sure I don't get embossing on that. So I'm going in a half an inch on this side too. I don't want to get embossing stuff on that because it won't stick very well. And that those are the parts that are going to stick. So once I have it scored, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of burnish down that fold best I can. And it's kind of difficult, again, with this kind of filigree type of situation. So what I think I'll do is I think I will take a ruler here and just put my ruler at the half inch mark. And I broke my Tim Holtz ruler. I'm so bummed. It just broke right in half. I was so bummed because I really loved that ruler. I'll get another one, but right now this is what I have. So, and it was one of my quilting rulers, and they're pretty tough. So I just kind of bent it up on that ruler, and then I'm just kind of hand bending it down. And I know I'm kind of off camera here. Eh. And then I'm just going to kind of rub to burnish, and then that excess that's hanging over, I'm just gonna cut it off with my scissors right there. Doesn't really matter, because it's gonna go against the side, but it bugs me, so, you know, you do you. <laughs> I'm gonna color the back, too, just like everything else. No stone left unturned. Or no gate, or whatever. <laughs> Ah, there are lots of cool gates, and you don't even have to put this part. It's just what I did. Uh, the the um, the one that I was talking about was like eighty something dollars. Has um, like dies that can go in, and they're cutaway type dies that go, you know, in the inserts. But again, 80 something dollars for something I probably won't use very often. When I could buy refills for my archival inks or my distress inks. <laughs> you know, priorities, gotta get them straight. So what I'm using here is this distress dauber. And this is, uh, this is basically a, um, a sticky ink that um, embossing powder will stick to. And I'm trying to cover as much as I can. Again, it's very difficult to see this stuff. But it's on there. And you can see that uh, some of my ink's rubbing off on the background, which is fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my Walnut Stain Distress Embossing Glaze. And my little tool, my little bucket here. I'm just going to pour this Walnut Stain Glaze over the top shake it off and I've got my heat tool warming up in the background by the way I'm gonna go ahead and put this in between my tweezers so I don't burn myself 
and just kind of holding it up a little bit. You kind of got to hold it flat too because it wants to spin around on you. It's so light. And I'm just going to emboss this on until it's shiny, basically. And this will help to sort of strengthen this little piece. Let's see, if you miss a spot, you can go back in with the dauber. And I'm holding my heat tool here because it's on still. I don't want it to cool off because I'm just doing little bits here. And I'll go ahead and complete with the embossing part. And you see how it darkened that down nicely? It is translucent, but it does have a brown tint to it. So it does darken the color a bit or alter the color of what's underneath. In this case, we're using walnut stain all the way around, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna do the other side. Same thing, just tapping this little tool on. This is a great little tool for spot embossing or doing something delicate like this. Yeah, I could have dipped it into my ink pad, but it's just, it's just a little bit easier to see and easier to control. Just lightly tapping off the excess here, and I will go ahead and heat emboss that as well. And I'm not worried about the loose edges because it's going to be anchored. So it doesn't, and you're not even going to see the bottom at all. Okay. So that piece looks pretty good. There's a couple of little spots where I feel like I need to do more, but I'm just going to leave it and just kind of clean up my... As promised, clean up <laughs> ish. Just put put a few things away. Mostly to make sure that I put my embossing glaze away because I do not want it spilling everywhere and I don't want to lose it because not that it's super expensive, but you know. So here's my pile of goodies that's gonna go in my card. And uh, there's a quite, I don't know what happened here. There we go. I'm going to trim now. I'm going to take a piece of this paper, this um, Distress Multimedia or Mixed Media paper. And I'm going to cut it down. And I'm going to cut it down to three and three quarters. Okay. And then... What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to not cut, but rip. So I get kind of an organic edge along the length, or actually along the short side here. And just kind of rip back and forth, you know, like little hills and valleys and stuff like that. You could use like a mountain die or a hill die, or you could cut it straight if you want to. This is all personal preference. I do want the next piece to be a little bit taller. So since I already have a rip there, I'm just gonna take my scissors and trim and then I've got my second piece. Now I do end up trimming all of these down. And I wanna make sure the next piece is a little bit taller, so I'm gonna pull this down a little bit, cut it, and just check it against this one and make sure that I'm going a little bit higher than the last one, so they're graduated in length. Again, I just kind of want that organic look. So now I'm with my filigree layer and these three layers, I have four layers that are gonna go on in into the inside of the card. Now each one of these I'm going to score at half an inch. 
And you'll see later in the video, since I lost a bunch of footage that <laughs> twice, that um, I'm going to be doing this part kind of over again. So you'll be able to see this part again, but just half an inch, flip it over, half an inch on the other side. And then I'm just finger burnishing those down. So here's my half inch, flip it over, half inch. And it doesn't matter which side's a mountain or a valley. It doesn't matter on these. It's not anything that's going to show. Those are the parts that anchor to the card. Boy, I cut that piece really crooked, so I'm trying to sort of get it straight. And it doesn't matter, again, because I trim these down, and you'll never, ever see that part because mm, that's part of the footage I lost. It seemed like when I press record, it stopped recording. And Look, I know how to record videos. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and trim some of these down. I don't know, about a quarter inch each or so. Quarter inch, eighth inch. Don't want them too tall. Nothing that goes in the inside the card should be taller than four inches, top to bottom. Let's go ahead and rescore that now that I have it straight. There we go. No rules say you can't do over. <laughs> So I've got my pieces cut here, and what I'm gonna do next is I want to color them. And I am gonna color them front and back. So, um, again, so you don't see on both sides two different colors. Okay, so I like to get out my little silicone mat when I'm ink blending because it holds my paper kind of steady. And I'm going to take and coat each one of these in peeled paint and front and back. And I don't, they don't show a whole lot, so I don't need them to be absolutely perfect with my ink blending. But I do, you know, I do want to pay close attention to detail here. And I will go ahead and kind of, oh, I don't know, grunge up the edges with the walnut stain just to kind of make everything cohesive with the card. So once I have those colored, I'll go ahead and grab my walnut stain. Well, some of these are too long. They're too tall, so I'm gonna trim them down even some more. Because, you know, I'm gonna be adding height to them with the flowers. Now, if you were using full-sized you know, different types of filigree type dies, then you would, you know, you definitely want them to cut to match. So you can see how they're going to stand. And I'll go ahead and take my walnut stain here now and go ahead and just kind of grunge up the edges. And I will do that on both sides as well. That attention to detail. <laughs> and yeah. So, got these colored in. Pretty simple process. So I have all four of those. I have all of my cutouts. Now I'm ready for my card itself. So what I'm going to do here is first I'm going to take and clean up some of this ink off of here because I don't want to get, you know, a whole lot of ink all over my um, actual card piece itself. I will be using the distress paper again and cutting out the parts of the card and there are two parts to it. Okay, so I've got the same paper and I'm going to grab my paper trimmer and I'm going to cut two pieces that are going to be six inches by four inches. So I start out um, on this side and I start out at the four inch mark. And then I'll flip it around and I'll cut that down to six inches. Make sure it stays against there. I noticed this piece moved, but it's okay. It'll be fine. I'm gonna fix it there a little bit. 
then on the, this is eight and a half by 11, by the way. Cut another one down to four inches and line it up with the grid lines there. And then flip it around and cut it down to six inches. And there I've got my two pieces. Now we need to score these pieces. And th there'll be a repeat of this at the end because I lost a whole bunch of footage. <laughs> I mean, a whole bunch. We're gonna um, score these at half inch. And three and a quarter inches. So I'll get my little scoring tool out and I'll start at the half inch mark and then score it three and a quarter on both of them. And we're scoring on the long side. And that always confuses me when I see videos. Well, what, what's the long side? <laughs> I don't know, I'm scoring on the six inch side. Put my little scoreboard away because I don't need to score anything more. And I'm going to burnish these down. So I'm folding against burnishing and folding this way. So we're folding each side inward and burnishing. And then I like to take and miter the corners of these, the short, the little half inch fold just a little bit of a miter. It doesn't have to be perfect, just don't cut past the fold line. Make sure they're straight and repeat on the other side. I'll be using red tape uh, for this and you're going to see uh, in the last part of the video how much I struggle with red tape. I mean, that stuff is a gigantic bear. But I've got the two pieces, and the first thing I'm going to do is put the two pieces together. Um, oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> I am going to stencil on them. So for this part, you can use double-sided paper. You can use white paper. You can color Two different color them two different ways. Do you do it how you like? I am going to be stenciling, and I'll show you on one part, and then I'll be flipping it over, doing the other side, and um, doing the second piece the same way. So I'm going to lay my stencil down, and it's okay if there's half an inch leeway on the top because I'm going to grunge that up anyway. So I'm going to grab my picked raspberry. I think peeled paint and fossilized amber. Where are you guys? I'm sitting here hunting for my picked raspberry and I just used it earlier. <laughs> you guys know how that goes. There it is. Let me get my little silicone mat out again so I can hold this steady. Now I'm going to be using my little finger daubers to blend in. There's my fossilized amber. And then I'm going to use peeled paint for the leaves. And it does not have to be perfect at all. That's not the idea of this. And furthermore, again, you can do this any way you like it. As long as your measurements are right, it's going to be cool. So I'm doing the centers of the flowers with the fossilized amber. And yep, I'm getting outside the edge and that's just fine. Lends itself to the grungy look. Now I'll go in with my picked raspberry and do all the petals. 
And yep, I get it. I get it right into that fossilized amber and that's fine. They blend just fine. I'm perfectly okay with that. Always happy to be imperfect and random. And the beauty of oxides is that they will layer on top of each other. So you'll see when I put the green on how it ends up really cool. It, it, it doesn't hurt a thing if I accidentally get one mixed into the other. So I'll just continue and I don't have this stencil down now this stencil got really dirty because I put pixie spray on it and um, I'm just gonna tell you right now I am NOT a fan of pixie spray on my stencils it feels like I can never get it completely off it's they're goobery and yucky and ink sticks to it and it's a mess um, I use this stencil a lot I use my all of my stencils a lot I really love my stencils I am going to wipe this stencil off in between because I'm going to be putting green and sometimes, you know, when I do the fossilized amber with the other one, it doesn't matter. But when I'm starting to do the green, I really don't want to pull too much ink of the um, picked raspberry into the greenery. So I'm just going to go around and stencil in all of the greenery trying to match the stencil where it was ish again does not have to be perfect it's you know it's a matter of your taste and i'm gonna get this thing filthy dirty anyway on purpose yes so this is what i love about working in the grunge world <laughs> is that you can get away with being sloppy <laughs> and you know I mean some things you have to be completely precise or it really looks bad but when you're when you're going in this direction when you're going for antique when you're going for old when you're going for vintage when you're going for grungy there's so much room for mm, artistic freedom slash mistakes <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about <laughs> So I'm just going in and trying to trying to fill in the space as best I can um, where it looks like there's greenery. There we go. See, that looks cool. It doesn't matter that it's messed up, that there's some green in the pink and so on and so forth. It's still cool. So let me go ahead and grunge this bad boy up here. I'm going to grab my walnut stain and I'm going to go in heavy around the edges. Yeah, yep, I'm definitely making marks and everything else and perfectly okay with it. So you'll see here Pretty soon when I'm done with this and I do the other ones, I lost all of my footage of putting the thing together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new video of just how to put one of these together because I am not going to go through all this again. <laughs> Cutting all those out takes hours. So here we go. I tried to record this and guess what? Psh, twice. I lost my recording so here's how it looks here's how you I glued my flowers on to the little pieces so you can look inside and I'm going to be showing you how to make the major portion of this thing <laughs> I'm so sorry I am so I was so mad when I saw that I'm like why is it recording what I did afterwards why is it showing my foot <laughs> oh, sometimes making videos so I'm gonna cut this piece down and I'm using white right now um, I'm gonna do four by six again yeah, I'm telling you, I felt so stupid. Um, 
it is what it is, right? <laughs> so I'm cutting two pieces down to four by six. And I'm going to cut one down, one of these down to three and three quarters. And by whatever length, it doesn't matter. It's the three and three quarter side that is going to be, you know, cut. And you saw me doing this before, basically making the three layers. And I'm, I'm going to be to, doing the tear method again just for that organic look. So there's two layers. And let me go ahead and do another little ripped up thing. And this one needs to be a little bit taller. That's too tall. Shorten it down a little. By this time, you guys, I'm tired because I've done two of these. And you'll see the die cutting itself takes forever. Die cutting, cutting and coloring. And then I'll go ahead and just trim this, this fourth piece down to just a resemblance of what that filigree piece was. Let me get that trimmer out of my way. And I'm going to go ahead and do my scoring. So I'm scoring on that three and three quarter side, half inch on each side. Then on my um, four by six, I'm scoring at half an inch and three and a quarter inches. I'm going to score them all at one time and get it done. I don't know. I think I I think I have half a brain today. Not sure what's going on with my I don't know if it's my iPhone or what's going on. So I'm going ahead and score these again at the half inch and the three and a quarter inches. Make sure it's a nice good score. I did a live tonight and the first part of the live, my phone refused to rotate. Stop that. Second part of the live, it just stopped. The whole YouTube studio crashed. And I'm scoring these in at a half an inch. So I'll score half an inch and then I'll flip it over and do a half an inch on the other side. So my live is in three parts. Ugh, so embarrassing. Just a bad tech day for me today. Good thing I didn't work because, you know, I work in technology. I work tech support for Verizon. And... <laughs> Usually I pride myself in fixing people's problems or their phone problems, but today would not have been a good day. Going in half an inch again on each side. But speaking of bad days, I had a customer the other day. He was blind and he had a basic phone. And somehow his phone had gotten like an amber alert and it was going off every two minutes and I could not help him at all because he couldn't navigate his phone because he was blind and on the phone and he was so distressed I felt so bad for him because it just he's like there it goes again there it goes again you have to help me make it stop and uh, just y'all just so you know, we cannot control your phones um, remotely. <laughs> now, some companies can do some things on the phone remotely, if the phone even lets you in. But we can't fix your phone remotely. We have to walk you through it. And I couldn't walk this guy through. So just kind of showing here, doing a demo of how I glue stuff on because... I already did this once and I lost the recording. What you want to make sure is that when you fold this over, nothing hangs past it. Because if it does, then it hits the side, obviously. 
So I'm folding these over to make sure that everything kind of stays in line and nothing goes over four inches. And then I'll just glue them on how I want them. So I'll glue this little guy to the front. And I'm only going to do one of these because, like I said, I've already done this. And then I'll glue this little guy to the back. So you can go back and forth. Do as many or as little as you like. And I'm just going to do these and just for demonstration purposes. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and fold these over and make sure they're straight and burnish them down. These are the 4 by 6 pieces. I ended up calling, asking the customer if I could call his local police department to come over and help him because I kept saying, do you have a neighbor? Do you have a friend? Does anybody come see you? Nope, I'm alone. There's nobody. Oh my gosh, broke my heart, you know, but I, you know, it could be me one day. So I called the local police department non-emergency number dispatch and I said, look, I have a customer. He's giving me permission um, can you please go help him? Because that those things will never, ever, ever stop unless you make them stop. So hopefully somebody went over to help this poor guy. So I've got those two pieces. Now here's where uh, you're going to watch me battle with this stupid red tape. But I'm going to put tape down on the mountain side of the fold lines. And here's why I hate this tape. It's so hard to cut. It sticks to your scissors. It's wonderful tape and it sticks amazingly. But cutting it down is a flipping nightmare. <laughs> and the farther I get on it, the more frustrated I get trying to get this down and not get... And to be able to cut it because that plasticky part wants to start bending on you once your scissors get all sticky. And you can see, uh, you'll, you'll watch me swap out scissors, but on um, this, after I put the tape on, I'm going to go ahead and um, cut it with my scissors. Now, you can use glue, but if you do use glue, you have to be patient and wait for things to dry, particularly on these pieces, because if it's not dry, it'll lift when you try to man manipulate it around. So that red tape works best. I can't vouch for any other tape holding as good as the red tape does. So I'm going to go ahead and fold and burnish these little sides in. And I'm going to trim that off because, again, you don't really need to, but it bugs me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put tape on all those sides, too. So you can see there's my little filigree piece, and it's pretty floppy. But um, I'm going to go ahead and just put all my tape down all at one time. Do it however you want to. This is just going to be how I do it. So first I try to cut a long piece of tape and then just cut little pieces off of it. And there's something stuck to my arm. <laughs> You should live in my craft room. <laughs> yeah, it's craziness. Uh, okay, let me see. Let's see if I can trim this down. Let me grab my little mat. Let me see if I can trim the tape on the mat with my knife. No, uh-uh, not going to work. Back to the scissors. Okay. Lay that one down. Take my scissors. They hang, the tape rips, I cuss. Ah, that's a whole wasted piece of tape in a big old glob on my scissors. <laughs> um, yeah, I like watching these YouTubers who do this perfectly every time with this red tape. Yeah, that's not going to be me <laughs> ever. <laughs> uh, back to just using it off the roll. Let's see if my scissors will cut it. Yeah, I'm off camera there, but they're not cutting it. Trust me on that one. It's stuck. I'm swearing. This is why I do voiceovers. Fine, I just wasted a bunch more tape. I have got to find another system. <laughs> they need to make, like, I don't know. 
Somebody needs to invent some sort of a tool that makes it easy to put this tape on. It's stuck to my finger. There's a big old globber. I don't want to get it on anything else because once I do, look at that glob of goop. It's mostly because I have ink on my fingers, so ink's getting stuck on it. All right, fine. I'm just going to grab my knife and I'm just going to cut right on my glass. I mean, it's meant to do that. Okay, I found a system-ish. I'm just using my knife from here on out. Let me go ahead and trim off any excess going on here. All right, next piece. One thing I do like about this is it's red so you can see that the backing's still on it. But that backer, I, I know there's some tape like this out there that rips. Because I think I've seen Nina Trapiani use it. I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure it was her I saw that she had found one that actually rips. You know, the other stuff ripped, but I don't trust it. It really, I don't, really don't feel like it has the strength that this red stuff does. And this is some tape I got on Amazon. I don't know the brand. I'll look for it in my orders. I've had it for a couple of years. Um, if I can find the link, I'll try to add the link. Almost done with these stupid red tape. Lord help me, I hate red tape. You can use glue, but if you use glue, you have to stop and wait for it to dry completely. No, I don't have time for all that. So these two pieces are going to glue together. So I'm going to pull off the... Um, I'm going to... Uh, use something sharp and pull off the backer to this particular piece. Then I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to match up, bend it down, make sure that the edges are matched up. And I just kind of use my fingers for feel. Yeah, it's not the best idea either because I get it off, but meh. It's right now the reason is because I'm so mad because I lost my foot itch. <laughs> Uh, guys, I'm a mess. Burnish that down, and then I'm just going to trim off that excess. Nobody's going to notice. I notice that it's there, and it makes me crazy, so I'm going to flip it off. But honestly, you wouldn't be able to notice it. There we go. Lovely. So now you can see we've got our little box shape. And... Next thing we have to do is we have to cut an aperture hole. We have to decide where to cut that hole. So, you know, where is going to be the front? So we see that that's going to stick together like that. You have to look at the overhang on the inside. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not going to pause my, my voiceover. Apparently, I'm going to pause my voiceover because there were way many sneezes after that. So, on the third panel, <laughs> from the left where the tape is, I'm going to use this particular die. And I would love to tell you where it came from, but I took these apart and threw out their wrapper long before I had any idea I should probably keep them. Um, so never knew I was going to do videos. So it probably came from Crafter's Companion. I don't know. Maybe it came from Spellbinders. I don't have any idea where I got that. But it is a nested set. So <laughs> anyway, I'm going to take that one and I'm going to cut it out in my Vagabond because it is my trusty, dusty, lusty, love my Vagabond. And there I've got my aperture hole. So you can see what you're going to see through there. And I'm going to burnish it back down again on all the sides with my bone folder. Just so everything stays nice and square and I can take a look inside and I know where I need to start. I need to start on the edge where my 
cut is. And so I'm going to rem remove my tape off my first, my last one, the back row. And I'm going to just kind of hold it down towards the bottom to make sure it stays lined up with the bottom and just tape it on just shy of the um, score mark there and I'm going to burnish it down. Then I'm going to take my second one, which is going to be, you know, the second most from the back. And you're going to see me put it on wrong here. No, nope, this one goes on correctly. And I'm just giving about, I don't know, just scant eighth of an inch from the last one. You can do as many of these as you want to, as long as they stay within that particular section of the card. And I'm going to go ahead and trim that off just because, again, you don't really need to because it doesn't show, but it bugs me. <laughs> so I'm going to trim it off. And I'm going to lay it down. I guess my second take of trying to do this, I put it on wrong. These are all correct. And just want to kind of get them, make sure they're kind of even along the bottom. And do you see how it kind of graduates down where the tape is? And I'll do this last one. And go ahead and just pull off the tape, pull off the backer there. And I'm going to lay it. I want these kind of just evenly spaced. They don't have to be. You can put them real close or real far apart. Put one, put five. As long as, you know, each side is a half an inch and the panel there that you're working with is four inches. So I can just lay all these down like this and I'll just be able to fold the card over to stick them to it. So I'll pull off the backer on each one just holding them down so that they don't flip back up and tape to anything you don't want them to tape to because that's what happens to me. And I'm going to make sure that they're kind of nice and straight on here before I lay down the other side and commit because at that point you're committing. And remember, what you're working with, the insides are done, everything's done. So I'm going to lay that down and I'm just going to burnish really well with my bone folder. So now you can see the kind of graduated layers where you could glue things. Not that hard, not hard at all. So I like on this panel right here, I like to just trim down probably a 16th of an inch or less. Just trim some down, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and then I'm gonna remove the, ta the uh, tape backer. I'm going to flip it over I'm going to flip this down, and before I glue, stick it on, I'm going to make sure that these edges match, and then burnish it down. And there you have your box card. You can see that it folds either way. And again, you need to be careful with your inside parts so that they don't actually, actually touch the sides. But that's it. That's how you do this box card. And I apologize that this is the craziest video you ever saw. And here's one I did with little cutesy stuff. Not usually my bag, but that was my first try. It was my proto prototype. Hey, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. And if you'd like to see more from me, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell um, if you want to be notified each time I upload a video. Look, I thank you guys so much for watching and for your patience with my fumbles. I hope you have a good day. And here's a couple of still pictures of a couple of the different ones I did. Thank y'all and have a good day.